Hey, welcome everyone to the Monday night live with Jackie Lewis. I'm Jackie Lewis and I've had a holiday, so uh, that wasn't bad. Um, it was pretty local, but nonetheless, holiday's a holiday as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I hope you're all well and I hope Melbourne people are feeling a little bit more free and such a great result. It's been um, something I've been watching quite closely with family and friends down there that I've been thinking about. So um, what a year and what a time to be alive. Um, so this week we've got question time. I've just got a couple of questions. People must have known I was away. And so I'll answer those first. Then um, I'll announce our Transformation Tuesday winners. And I'll also, um, we've got Verdi Vadura, who I, um, I'm sure that's not his, I think that's his Facebook name. So we'll go, go through that when he comes in. Um, Verdi's one of our members and he's on his own journey, but he's also quite expert in the realm of fruit and veggies. And I thought with the seasons changing, um, it's also a good time to explore. We talk a lot about eating foods that are in season and also what the benefits of that is. And there's some fruit and veggies that come into season. The prices go down, which is awesome. So always buy fruit and veggies that look more affordable because you know that they're in good supply. And things are a bit weird at the moment with um, all the lockdowns and that sort of stuff. The farmers have been doing different things with their planting. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But um, Verdi's gonna walk us through different veggies and maybe some fruits and also let us know some interesting things we can do with them. So stay tuned for that. Um, currently, I've got a couple of questions. Um, Sandy Wade's asking about um, her progress so far. She's been 20 days out of surgery at the time of her writing, which could be within the last week or two. Um, but she finds that most food she's tried so far goes in okay, but when it hits her tummy, she gets some pain. Um, one teaspoon of mashed egg and later less than a quarter of a cup of pumpkin soup and I don't ever want to eat again. <laughs> but I'm getting up in the morning and I'm so dizzy and I feel like I could pass out. It's not always because of low blood pressure. How can I manage five times one quarter of a cup of food? Isn't it incredible that that sounds like a lot to get in? Um, and Sandy, I did reply in the group, making sure that you've got contact with your surgeon and your dietitians, because I think this one, if you're nearly three or four weeks out, um, it would be good to make sure that everything's settling and that you're healing well and everything's in order before we look at why food won't go in so I won't say too much about what you can do because I don't know if you've got the right um, if you've spoken to someone and you've been assessed and I think that would be probably the first port of call um, and it, yes the other thing it can do when these sorts of things are happening I noticed that you said I don't want to ever eat again <laughs> And it can set up an aversion because of the pain and the discomfort. Um, and it makes you almost afraid of putting food in. We don't really want that to happen. So the sooner you can um, get someone to have a look and see what's going on for you, the better. Um, and then just also be aware that if there's not very much going in, you really need to be um, making sure you're taking your vitamins because this is the time when um, deficiencies can sneak up if there's not much food going in. Um, particularly, and I'm just saying this more for everybody's benefit, but particularly just after surgery, if there's not much food, which there isn't, um, in that liquid and puree stage, it's really um, looking at getting in that dense nutrition from what you can fit in. Um, but if that's not happening or you're vomiting a lot, um, I know you're not, but I know that there are some cases that are, you know, you're trying to eat food and there's vomiting after eating. That's something to be really aware of because deficiencies and dehydration can sneak in. Um, and they need to be prevented as much as possible because that's a real setback. So please, if you haven't already, Sandy, make sure you've got someone um, supporting you and uh, just check in and see how, see what's going on. 
Um, please can you update us in the group just so that we know how you're going and then if you need more support from kind of a food perspective just send me an email to um, support at bnmulti.com you could also have a look we've got on our front page of our website there's some free downloads which are available um, for the first and second stage so on the front page the home page there's a tab that's called bariatric recipes I think and in there you'll find about five different free ebooks um, and one of them we put together is ideas and um, solutions for the first and second stage, which are quite um, some things that you might not have tried before, but also just making sure that you're putting in quite nutrient dense foods if you can. And it might just give you a couple of ideas on trying something, you know, different that you might not have considered. Um, so please do let us know how you're going um, and we can certainly support you, but always first check with your team. Um, to make sure that your, um, you know, everything's in order. So chin up. I know it's a tricky session. It's a tricky time. The first couple of months. Um, next question is from Alex Manning. Um, Jackie, I'd like some suggestions for best choice meals when dining out. This is a great question. For example, we're going to an Indian restaurant on Friday night. How do I choose the best meal for a Barry post op? What do avoid? What do I avoid? Um, are papadums okay? Or well, papadums, they're so yummy. Um, but you're right, these are great questions. And when I'm even when I'm looking at eating out, I like I tend to go for Asian food because I like the way they uh, it's predominantly stir fry, isn't it? Um, Thai food, or um, I don't eat Chinese, but um, having a think about what you're choosing is a great way of looking at it. And if I were to go to an Indian restaurant and my goal was to eat as little fat as I can, um, get some veggies in and enjoy myself, which is also a very important part of eating food. Um, I would look at sort of also how I tolerate. So I don't know how far post-op you are, but looking at what um, sits comfortably with you and what's got a good level of protein in it. So a lot of the Indian foods um, can be high in protein, the meat dishes. They also use a lot of lentils and that sort of stuff which is great. Um, the other thing they do use is a lot of ghee. So they, the sauces that look delicious, but they're, they, you need to ask a few questions about how they're prepared because it's kind of sneaky. It looks um, lovely, but it could be full of ghee and fat. You don't know and how much salt they put in there. So generally I would ask the question of, you know, can you tell me a little bit about the dishes and how they've been prepared? A safe, safe bet in an Indian restaurant would be tandoori chicken because you know that it's just generally chicken thighs and they're just prepared in that lovely sauce and cooked in that beautiful oven. Um, and I love those. Uh, so looking at kind of those foods or foods that aren't sort of rich and saucy and um, are going to really pack a whole lot of fat and calories into your meal. The other thing, you know, if that's something that you know, you've had a good week and you've eaten everything else and you've met all your needs and um, it life is life and you need to enjoy it. Um, just look at your portion size and kind of map out, you know, a serving of uh, protein and just, you know, maybe do the dal. I love the dal because it's high in fiber and there is some protein in there as well. But it's, you know, don't be shy to ask questions now that you are looking at food in a different way. Um, it's not being fussy and it's not being difficult. And it, more and more restaurants are getting so many more questions about, you know, how they're preparing food and what's going into it because so many people have got dietary requirements from like gluten-free or celiac or things that they're avoiding for kind of ethical or more religious reasons as well. So it's not um, that you're being a pain. And I think it's really important to remind you of that, that, if you feel awkward asking questions about how the food's prepared and asking for how you want it to appear on your plate, it's something that you might practice because um, it's really important that when you go out, you firstly enjoy your meal in the way that you want to, but you're not kind of just taking food in because you didn't want to be a nuisance or be difficult about asking how it's presented. So um, yeah, it's something to practice is kind of asking questions about what's in the sauce or what's in the food that you're eating. Um, and papadums, 
um, whilst they're wonderful, they, yeah, they're fried. Some of them are. And did you know you can do them in the microwave? Just telling you that. Um, they are, they could be classified as a slider food. They're big on the outside and very small once they go into the tummy. So set yourself a limit, you know, you, it's not about not having, and um, if there's no medical reason or, you know, you're kind of happy with your progress at the moment and you're not really, you know, you're kind of leveling out with the weight loss, it depends on where you're at. Um, but looking at, you know, maybe I'll have one puppet dum instead of having a whole bowl full. Um, and just getting used to those um, different sizes of the servings as well. So I hope you had a nice time at the Indian restaurant. It might have been in the past now. Um, but it'd be good to see what you did and the questions that you asked and that sort of thing. So always look for things that are, you know, lots of veggies and some meat and um, not too much on the fatty kind of salt side. Um, thanks. So Anne-Marie Grimes has asked me, um, I'm soon to be a newbie gastric bypass on the 2nd of October. Does anyone take blood pressure tablets and other slow release meds? If so, I'm not sure how I can take them because they can't be crushed. Um, this is one for your team to look at because I don't know what the actual medications are. Um, and generally when you visit the hospital or prior to that they've set you up with everything they know about you and they know which medications you're taking but you're right the slow release um, tablets can't be crushed so generally a lot of people report that they're um, able to take a tablet but always I think that's one for your team as well just to give them a often if you need to take your medications to the hospital um, and they'll need to know that before you have your operation what you're on so I'm sure they've um, they generally cover it. Um, but yeah, always ask the question before you take anything after surgery. Um, and yeah, ask them what the best way forward is for you. Then we've got uh, the forever present hair loss question from Lorraine James. Um, firstly, I had beautiful thick hair and I was told it would thin out a little bit bit of a shock from the operation which in some areas now my hair is very thin I'm told by my surgeon it will take about 12 months to grow back has this happened to you um, um, I've lost 13 kilos take the multivitamins iron vitamin c plus I drink water and exercise daily um, so yeah I've got a great article on hair loss Lorraine that I'll post in the group for you again because it helps everybody again as well um, but generally there's different responses and it does seem to be women who either talk about hair loss more or experience it more um, the first probably six months after surgery the hair loss can be a result of the shock of the surgery um, and that can lead to losing hair, but then basically it'll start to regenerate after that phase of the hair loss has passed. If all your nutritional ducks are in a row um, and you're meeting your protein needs, your iron, your um, essential fats like omegas and, you know, avocado oils, olive oil, that sort of stuff is really important for forming hair. Um, yeah. If it's, if you're experiencing hair loss six months after your surgery, it's something to have a look at because it can be linked to nutritional deficiency, iron deficiency in particular, um, things to do with your thyroid, which your iron deficiency will affect your thyroid function. So um, there's a great um, article I'll post in the group, which is called um, bariatric sorry, hair loss in the bariatric community. Um, and it explains the whole thing. And it also, we've also got a flyer on hair loss, which tells you basically um, if you're experiencing that hair loss after the six month mark, what sort of nutrients you'll need to catch it all up again. But generally look at your protein intake. Um, if you're not meeting your protein needs, your hair is just a lovely, nice thing to have. Um, but if you're not eating enough of everything, your body will just conserve those nutrients to do something else with it that's more important. So always look at hair as kind of a nice to have. Um, and when the nutrients aren't around for that, basically they'll, the body will conserve them by not producing hair. Um, last question is from Sherelle Raven. It's about protein. I'm hoping I'm two years post op bypass and wondering if I still need to be counting my daily protein. I think I answered this one in the group, even when I was on holidays. 
Um, yes, you do for the rest of your life. And I do, I haven't had the surgery, but every day I look at how much protein I've had because it's so key to keeping your weight in check. It's also key to um, retaining muscle, maintaining your immune system, maintaining your hormonal balance. Um, I always say we're not made out of carbs. We're made out of protein. So forever and a day now, um, we all need to be looking at what we're eating. Um, and even if you haven't had the surgery, if you're living a healthy lifestyle and you're making choices around kind of maintaining weight and doing all that sort of stuff, we're all looking at what we're eating. So yes, you would need 60 to 80 grams of protein each day um, in 20 to 25 gram in, um, intake. So anything more than that, you don't absorb the whole lot. So the body can manage about 20 to 25 grams of protein at a time. So the answer is yes, yes, and yes. And if you don't know how to manage that or how much you need or what you're working towards, it's best to go back and um, get some input from your dietitian because around that two month, two year post-op part is where you'll start to get hungry again if you haven't already. And this is when protein is the key to kind of helping you to maintain that healthy kind of level blood sugars and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, so yes, if you haven't got someone to help you also just send us an email at support at bnmulti.com and we can point you in the right direction. There's always dietitians available on um, telehealth now so that it doesn't have to be local to you, but we can recommend someone who's wonderful. Um, lastly, we'll do the winners of Transformation Tuesday. Um, ah, this is fantastic. Normally have all the girls posting their pictures, which is lovely. We've got had Shannon Perchmoser, who's lost 83 kilograms. Um, the photos are in the group and it's a remarkable um, transformation. So thanks, Shannon, for sharing your story. You've won, um, and I wish I, I do have one. Hang on. Here's what you won. Oh, I won't show. <laughs> It's getting, <laughs> it's getting swallowed up by my background. It's a lovely little blender. It's the new um, Easy Blender Light. I can't get it to appear. No, it won't work. Isn't that funny? It's taken up by my um, virtual background. So we'll send one of those out to you. All you need to do is also send us an email to support at bnmulti.com. And we'll send it out your way. And it's fantastic for um, portable protein drinks and smoothies and all that sort of stuff. It's just a little bit smaller than our older blender, not old, but our original model. Um, and it's, yeah, we've had really good feedback from it. It's a really handy kind of put in your bag, lunchbox kind of thing. So well done. Started at 183 kilos and is now 115 kg. Um, so good work. It's not easy. Um, you've done it. And then we have one more winner who also wins a blender, um, Yvette Weir, um, officially 12 months to the day that she had her gastric sleeve. She's lost 52 kilograms and marked the occasion with the two people that have supported me through it by getting professional photos done. What a nice idea. Um, you really also celebrate the wins, people. I think it's really important, even if it's on a weekly basis, you're celebrating yourself and your new way of living your life and your transformation. So power to you. I think that's wonderful. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of people are avoiding the camera from time to time, but it's really wonderful that you're, um, you know, taking that record of your progress as well and being proud of yourself. So good on you. Um, so I've had... Verdi's waiting in the background here. Um, I'm going to welcome him into our group. And, oh, look, here he is. That was quick. I wonder if he can, he's connecting to audio. We'll get started with our fruit and veggie combo, which will be great. Can you hear me, Verdi? Yes, I can. Hello. Yes, yeah. you, you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Been in the waiting room for a long time. I can see your photo. Okay. Let me try this. Um, yeah. No, I don't know. Not working. Are you still there, Verdi? Yes, I am. <laughs> we can just see the top of your head. Okay, hang on. I'll fix that up. Oh, that's the. I might see. I'll quickly see if I can send him a chat. A little message to see if he's okay. 
Hello. No. Hello. No, can, you can you hear um, me? Can you hear me? Sent me an email about what he was going to cover. Um, maybe I can help with that to begin with because I'm not sure why we can't. Um, I don't know. I've got it all done. Now. See you. Start your video. Start my video. Ah, okay. there you are. There we go. I can't I've hear got you. you now. You can't? Is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I yes. can't hear you. Oh, Let no. Me Let me try see if I can now. allow. I was just seeing if I can. Um... No, I can't do anything can't, with the sound. No. Okay. <laughs> Let me try here at my end. Can you, are you not muted? Have you got headphones plugged into your computer? Yes, I've yep. got the headphones. They're all plugged in. Everything's right. I wonder right. if everyone else can hear you. I'm not ah. sure. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hang interesting. On. I'll try putting them on you. But that's you could, um, do you want to try to take your headphones out and see if that makes any difference and unplug them? How's from that? the computer. Can you hear me? If they see if they're if they're still connected to the computer, if you unplug them, maybe I'll be able to hear you. I don't know. Yeah. Just trying that. <laughs> How's that? No. Can you hear me? No. Interesting. No. I'll see if the people at home can can hear you. Um Otherwise, we'll have to okay. reschedule it. We are. Ah, you guys can hear him and I can't hear. That's really weird. Let me see if that makes any difference. Ah, can you hear me? You guys can hear him and I can't. It's really weird. Maybe I'll take mine out. That makes any difference. Doesn't make any difference. Well, if you can, if if you can hear, can hear and they can hear you, I'll just ask you some questions and you can answer them, and I'll listen back later on. I don't know what's happened to the sound. So, tell me a little bit about your journey so far. When did you have your surgery, Bertie? Now he can't hear me. <laughs> Oh dear. So can hear. Okay, can you hear me? Now can you hear me? Vincenzo? Yes, we can. Hang on. I can hear I'll him. Just see what He's I can better do with here. headphones can... on. Good. Hear can you me? guys at home hear Verdi now? Okay, look, I'll give it a so go So do you here. want to tell us a little bit about work and you it's and through. your journey so far? Okay, here we go. Look, a little bit of a rundown on me. Sorry, Jackie, I'll I don't see know. I you probably can't hear sound. anything, but I'll uh, give it a little spiel. I had my operation on the 9th of October. Like that. Um, that. I like went that. in there um, weighing 98 kilos. I was originally 106, but with all the... Um, soups and the, the um, oh, okay, uh, with the soups and all the things that we ate before the operation, I got down to 98. I'm 98. now at 67 kilos. So the operation was on the uh, 9th of October, which, and it's been a great journey. Excellent. Now, I can hear you now. Just to get on with the fruit and the veg. I'll tell yeah. you what there is at the moment. Perfect. Um, with the vegetables, asparagus is going great guns. I've never seen it this cheap at this time of year before. Beans are great buy. Broccoli is really cheap. Carrots, cauliflower, celery, fennel. If you yeah. enjoy the licorice flavour, that's quite good. And you can do it in salads, bake it, cook it, whatever you like to do with it. Baked. Snow peas are very reasonably priced for this time of year as well. It's spring. So... All the Asian vegetables, bok choy, baby bok choy, Chinese broccoli, etc. they're all um, coming on and very, very reasonably priced as well. We've got pumpkins, potatoes are all good. 
and the tomatoes are coming down in price. Zucchini flowers should be yeah. available in nearly all the fruit shops because they are a bargain buy and the restaurants being closed or not as busy as they normally are, there's quite a few around. So even if you just tell your greengrocer to pick them up for you, yeah. should be great. I haven't seen them. In Do the you... fruit, we've got the bananas, which are a reasonably good buy. Strawberries are still pretty cheap, but as the weather warms up, Queensland strawberries will tighten up and they'll move to the local ones. So the ones that are grown in the Sydney Basin, and they'll have really good flavour. Mm. And then as it gets hotter here, it, they'll start coming up from Melbourne. Blood oranges are still good if you want something to add to your drinks or whether you should be drinking or not, I don't know. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's for you guys. Um, mandarines are still good. Now, the mangoes are coming from the Northern Territory, very reasonably priced and a pretty good buy. Uh, melons, we have rock melon, honeydew, and the pil de sapo, which is a bit like a honeydew. It's uh, The translation is frog skin melon. You've probably seen them in the shop. They're like a dark greenish yellowish color and they're quite good to try rhubarb's really cheap and a good buy as well and that's about all i can say all at there the moment. for you yeah that sounds so, wonderful and with your what's your what are you going to do with asparagus now that it's so cheap are there different yeah, options that in the way that you prepare well. it and that's about all i can it's say all there the for you yeah yeah that sounds wonderful. And with your, what's your, what are you going to do with Can asparagus you? now that it's so cheap? Are there different options that in the way that you prepare it? Look, I, I just like to um, so either there. fry it in a bit of butter. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I like to just fry it. Your, Sorry? Asparagus now that it's so cheap. Are there different options that in the way that you oh, prepare it? Oh, you must it? have the Look, actual I, footage I just playing. Like to, um, so either there. fry it in a bit of butter. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you must have Sorry. Facebook open no, and so Zoom. Is that right? I think if you've got both Facebook open and our meeting, you're just going to get an echo, but don't worry. So what? Yes, what it is. You, I'll yeah. switch the Facebook off, but when yeah. I do, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. That's a shame. But See, it's good I've to lost hear your, me. Your voice. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I'll type you a message. This is what you call technical techno, issues. Techno, <laughs> yeah, techno happening. Um, tell us what you do with your asparagus. You can tell us. I think if you've got both Facebook open. You're just going to get an echo. Yeah, that's yep. right. I'm taking that off. I'm taking the voice off so I can make comments on here. Oh, groovy. Yeah, I can hear you again now. Tricky. I think... Um, Bertie must be sending me a message, maybe. So it sounds like, Tim, there's a whole prefer, range of I new... I prefer it boiled. A boiled? Or just blanched in water. Yep. Served with a bit of lemon and pepper. Nice. That's, that's my favourite. That's yep. that's what I like. A bit of lemon's nice. That's a great idea. It so went from like nine dollars. It time. went from like seven dollars a bunch now, up here a chef, to dollar so... ninety eight. Verdi also does a radio show on the weekends. Is that right? In Melbourne, there's a um, certain station that um, you do your fruit and veggie reports as well, and um, so a bit of a regular on the Melbourne radio as well, which is cool. What I might do, I'm finding it very hard to um, give you guys the message that we wanted to. So what I might do is next, maybe we'll invite Verdi back when we can get our sound sorted out. And, um, yeah, it keeps it a bit more interesting for everybody in the audience. So I'm sorry, team, that the sound hasn't worked out. 
I'll message Bertie and just let him know. But um, I'm going to end the session and we will do another live next week and we'll have um, some coaching and uh, some sound engineering work done in the, in the midst of it. But thank you so much for your time and for your rundown on the um, fruit and veg that's in season. I think it's really important that we all eat food that's local food that's in season and food that's fresh. Um, and if it hasn't traveled very far, it's always going to be better for you. It maintains all the nutritional value and um, makes a whole lot of difference to the um, yeah different plant and nutrients in the food. So without further ado, I will bid you all farewell. And um, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Good night, everyone.